for inviting us here. And my name is Alma Lena Suomala, and I work for the Criminal Sanctions Agency. I worked here uh, since 2010. And then we have here Tuomas Hanhikangas. Tuomas, could you introduce yourself, please? Tuomas, we can't hear you. Can you hear Tuomas? I can't. Rob, can you hear me? Okay. Um, we spoke to him a moment ago and he, he came through. So is there, just check your, uh, if you go to the microphone and just check which, if you go onto the little arrow, just double check which, uh, which one is plugged in, which one it's picked up. I believe it now I'm hey, alive. There we yeah. go. Yes, oh, yeah. there we go. I had an, uh, <laughs> it has some other mute button as well. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, as I as I told to myself, and I to, I, I will tell it to you right now. Uh, my name is Tuomas Hanhikangas. I'm a senior criminal, criminal sanctions officer here at Sukeva prison at northern east northeastern part of Finland. I work here as an um, sort of like a head of security and an um, Pleased to be here and join this joining this conversation. Okay, and then we have Pia Puolakka, uh, who is uh, with us now. So could you be the uh, uh, introduce yourself, please? Yes, hello, and thank you for inviting me to this meeting. Uh, my name is Pia Puolakka, and I work for the Criminal Sanctions Agency Central Administration in Finland and I'm the project manager of the Smart Prison project. Nice to meet yeah. you all. Nice to meet you all too. And uh, and I also, uh, I forgot to say where I work, I, I have started, worked um, in an assessment center which is located in Hamelina prison, which is this uh, the smart prison that we are uh, talking about. And um, so, uh, Pia, could you tell as far as like, what is this smart prison? What does it mean? Uh, we started the smart prison project in 2018. And the idea was to uh, build Finland's first smart prison, which means mm -hmm. a prison where every prisoner has a personal cell device in cell for the use of digital services inside prison and in a restricted uh, way also to outside. And yeah. this is what we have now done. The prison has opened and the smart smart uh, system was implemented in the beginning of March this year. And at the same time, we've been developing uh, uh, digital services in all our units, which have joint use laptops in every prison and probation office. But mm -hmm. of course, we also hope to extend this uh, cell device model to all our closed units. Okay, okay. And Tuomas, you are working in very uh, like traditional prison and uh, not smart prison. So how do you see this uh, uh, development? What do well, you think about it? <clears throat> yeah, it would be sort of like inviting a, in, uh, kind of funny to call our prison as a dumb prison instead of a, like a smart prison. <laughs> well, no, no. As a matter of fact, I'm sitting, I believe, at the, the same office, what used to be Pia's office back in uh, some years ago or something like that. Well, which is, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm representing this sort of like a very old, stylish, I, I would say that we are like a relique, even in, a fin in the terms of Finnish prisons. We are old, quite big in our terms, 181 beds here. Of the prisoners, I believe that we are the fourth biggest prison in Finland, and then, um, this used to be like an agricultural related prison. So basically, it was the, the deal back in then was the clock chimes in the morning, everybody get up, have a breakfast, and then line up and go to work. There used mm. to be sort of like an um, lots of different sort of like an uh, agricultural activities going on, cattle. You know, like in a, we had in a forest industry here, they were burning bricks for the sort of like, in a, they had a, this sort of like a fabricating thing here. And in a, of course, all the surroundings and all the systems and even this sort of like an, um, 
mindset, you know, like in a state of mind, was focused that sort of like an you know, agricultural and sort of like an you know, working attitude. And you know, it's it's challenging nowadays because it it sort of like represents world which doesn't exist anymore, you know. Mm-hmm. And you know, I do totally agree that this sort of like a smart person thing is not it's more like an um, what we should aim to. But at the same time, um, still we sort of like old facilities, we sort of like old way of thinking and, and even old working methods are up and they are, you know, like, an, um, they are in use, like in everyday use. So it's sort of like a very challenging and a very interesting at the same time. Mm. Just to keep it brief, you know. Yeah. yeah. And you still have some computers for prisoners that they can use, but they are not in the cells, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah, what we yeah. do have is uh, we have like on uh, I believe four stations. Well, yeah, and basically they are inmates are skyping, prisoners are skyping mm. using Skype connections to their relatives and families and so on. And they are also allowed to make bank transactions and all this sort of like a bit very basic stuff, like and uh, making these applications for the uh, Kela, like an uh, what is it, governmental benefit system and so on. But it's it's yeah. always demanding somebody to guide them, mm. somebody to escort them from their cell or their cell block to a certain like an, um, an, uh, different segregated room for this sort of like an, a comp- laptop, basically it's laptop computer yeah. and a chair yeah. and a table. So it's very, it's it's demanding quite much as it, it's, mm. it consumes labor because you have to have an um, officer to do it, officer escorting them and basically Skype calls are also surveillance by the officer and then it's, it's, mm. It's taking quite much toll of the uh, man labor from uh, everyday, yeah, process, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And B, is this something that uh, uh, is uh, better in like in those cell uh, desktops that uh, uh, they don't have to have like guards when uh, prisoners are dealing with their like everyday mothers? like bank accounts or something? Is that something that they can do from the cell or what they can exactly do? They can use the cell, uh, from the cell device, they can use the same whitelist services, restricted internet services that are also on every unit's whitelisted joint use laptops. But uh, what helps prisoner is that the cell device is directly in the cell. So it's mm. a personal, mm-hmm. personal use and uh, doesn't need any assistance from uh, prison staff. But also in the units that have joint use laptops, uh, prison staff doesn't have to surveil the use because the internet is whitelisted, it's restricted, mm. and every prisoner ap- applies uh, the permission to use the laptop from prison director. And if he has the permission from prison director, uh, there is no need uh, to uh, for staff to have any surveillance on the use. In this way, they are uh, secured devices in in all units. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Pia, Pia, um, can I have a question for this? Sorry, Alma Lena. It's okay. okay. Yes. Can, can I ask you? Yeah, I, I should know this thing, but and, um, well, let's pretend that, and I'm just asking this for the public. Of course, I do know. How what does this pre- permission process goes? You know, is it? I know that the the authorities, the the prison governor is authorized to to sort of like release this prison uh, this uh, permission. But an, um, is it sort of like an everyday a normal process to everybody, or is it sort of like an um, made made like in individual individually? You know. So, uh, in other words, do you automatically get in a this sort of like a permission when you are admitted to Hamel in a prison, which is sort of like a smart prison at the moment? Everybody has to apply the permission from prison director, but if there is mm-hmm. not any specific reason why not to give the permission, mm-hmm. then the permission yeah. should be given. But in the paper, they have to give some uh, reasons for what they are using this device for especially mm, yeah, in yeah. the units that have the joint use com- computers. Mm. So they have to tell that they need it, for example, for social reasons or educational, vocational or uh, other uh, relevant services use. Mm. Yeah. And, and then the present director makes the decision based on yeah. this application. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. Thank you. 
Okay. Is is there uh, some like restrictions that prisoner can't get access? What what can be the like reasons that they are not allowed to use the uh, restricted internet? Uh, sorry, can you ask again that? Uh... Yeah, yeah. Is there like uh, some reasons that a prisoner can't get uh, the uh, internet? Like as you said first, that there can be some uh, cases when the uh, internet can't uh, be given to the prisoner. Security reasons. If there okay. is, there can be varied. I, I don't know about all the reasons that might be, be behind it, but if there has been mm. some suspicious behavior or there's a risk that the prisoner would misuse the laptop somehow, then mm. this is the. It might be so that uh, he doesn't get the permission. Okay. How, Do you how have is any, it possible? Sorry, sorry, sorry yeah. Almanel, again. One, 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 one more small question about this subject. Uh, do you have any figures, any numbers? How many permissions are, you know, like in a granted and how many are sort of like in a denied? In a, in a person I don't have, a, we, yeah, don't um, keep, okay. we don't keep this kind of record, so mm -hmm. I don't have. Yeah, no, okay. No. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so is it is it possible now, like for example, do like uh, some studies or like uh, education from the cell, like online studies or something, online courses or? Yes. Yes. Of course, it's it's possible, and and all um, services related to studies are quite uh, popular among prisoners mm. and we have our own Moodle platform for studies inside prison if you okay. want to take courses of basic education or high school education. Yeah and that's also very important because because it's a yes. very uh, important thing in a reintegration in the society when prisoners come back to the society. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay so so we have this uh, like like those cell desktops uh, and the use of uh, internet is like one approach of the smart prison. Is there anything else like that uh, could like describe it? What is the smart prison like? You mean what is the smart prison like besides the cell device? Yeah, yeah. Is there some something else? Uh, in Hamelin, we also have some some extra uh, services that we don't have in other units. We have, mm -hmm. for example, devices for virtual reality uh, testing. Okay. This is one okay. of the services. And uh, compared to the joint use uh, laptops, um, there's online canteen also on the device, Ooh. so they can make their purchases inside prison directly from the cell device. And uh, then uh, besides the restricted internet, the system has other features for the communication inside prison. So prisoners can, for example, send their requests to prison mm. staff in electronic mm. form. Mm. They can also communicate with the chat messages uh, to staff. And there's calendar uh, in the system that they can use. There's also mm. a material bank that contains forms and other important material related to rehabilitation, some handbooks, something to read, read or study during your prison time. And then this whitelisted websites, uh, also office tools for studying uh, on, on the laptop and some storage device also for the same purpose. And then we are using also the video calls uh, between staff members inside prison and mm. prisoners. They can also use these video calls in the system and they can also take outside calls from um, uh, to their relatives or some of our uh, partners who are doing rehabilitative work with prisoners or other officials that uh, might have to uh, be involved with prisoners. Uh, 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 important things. Okay, yeah, that that sounds very good because, like, from my perspective, where uh, when I work uh, in the assessment center and uh, I do risk and needs assessment and sentence plan for prisoners, and in uh, traditional prisons, uh, prisoners can send like some paper papers uh, paper messages to the officers, 
but now I I think it's a huge uh, huge uh, development that uh, is very good thing uh, nowadays that prisoners can uh, send electronic messages. So uh, how do you see Tuomas this this point that uh, prisoners can uh, send messages via laptop? Well, basically everything sounds very good, you know. Uh, mm. Which sort of like relates very much to this sort of like a principle of normality, which is sort mm. of like a, one of the key core and cornerstones of our way of doing prison work here in Finland and in the Nordic countries. And I believe that that is something that is one thing, what is called like an this sort of like Nordic exceptionalism in the first place. You know, just we like to, we like to think that our correctional facilities and prisons are so much related to the surrounding social life as po as possible you know that's of course and uh we can and this will be one huge sort of like an uh, achievement or leap to towards that sort of a direction but an um cynicist in me <laughs> which lives strongly in me as well because i'm a uh, well <laughs> i don't know if maybe i was born if or something maybe 20 years in the service has you know like a developing whatever but an um I'm just thinking that these sort of like modern solutions are they bringing like an um, modern problems or sort of like an these sort of like a modern modern solutions come with an um, modern problems or like an, a modern fallacies? Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with an um, this sort of like an, a meaning of this phrase of uh, black swans, sort of like a problem which occurs and we don't even know that that sort mm -hmm. of like a thing exists before we see it, you know. And I do believe, unfortunately, and also at the same time, very realistically, and then um, as long as there is this sort of like a new, um, new sort of like a you know, things, new procedures, new machines, whatever, as long as soon as somebody invents it, as soon somebody will try to exploit it in a way or other, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there might be some sort of like an um, this might be also only in my brain, but an, um, there is a huge possibility to also misuse this system, even through these white listed uh, sort of internet pages and so on. I know that there has been lots of testing, you know, and lots of precautions have been done, but still. And an um, other thing is um, what I really, what is actually true at the moment, but our penal code which was sort of like an, a refresh in 2006, doesn't actually sort of like a follow this, because it, I believe that it's sort of like a more like an, a modern problem in uh, many areas of life, but this sort of like a technological sort of like our, uh, like an, a development goes so fast, but our legislation can sort of like an, a catch up. For example, with banking activities at the moment, our penal code uh, says, uh, so like prison code says, that an uh, inmate is sort of like prisoner is allowed to transfer money or other, you know, like an uh, merchandise goods to the outside of prison with an uh, with an uh, certified course and with a permission. And at the moment, we do not as as we sort of like an um, uh, internet banking and whatever is allowed from sale. We do not actually have any sort of like a chance to follow up any sort of like on these transactions and so on. Well, I know what the law is changing now and they are sort of like, and again, having um, this new mechanism for detecting this sort of like in a very unusual, so like a withdrawals or like in a cash exchanges mm -hmm. and so on. But still, what I'm just saying in brief that in, um, this sounds very good. And I, I certainly think that we should like follow these sort of like as development steps because we do not have to, and we are not allowed to stay that the seventies or eighties century. Um, but another thing is that we have to be very cautious at the same time about these sort of like a new black swans which might grow in some places we which we don't even see at the moment yet. You know, cautious, but I'm. Let's let's say if what I'm thinking about this sort of like a thing is I'm very cautious, but at the same time I'm um, very positive in a very mm -hmm. care, caring or very, very sort of like a very I'm a positive but cautious at the same time. 
Okay, so so be are these familiar thoughts to you when Bit you have been? Uh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> so so how do you think be about this uh, these uh, concerns? What Thomas was uh, talked about? There's a lot of possibilities, but we also have to. Uh, yes, do you hear my voice now? Yes, yes, I can yes. hear you. At yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So I was saying that I'm very familiar with this idea that there. There's a lot of possibilities at the same time, mm. and at the same time, some risks. Mm. And when we started to uh, implement the system, the first thing we were thinking about was the security of the system. And that's why we, of course, audited the system mm. four times, actually. And we take into good uh, consideration all data security and data protection issues. And we and we know that if, uh, if there's a skilled prisoner, he can... He, can possibly misuse the system. It's, mm. it's always possible. It's possible with every system if you are enough skilled. Mm. But at the moment, I think we are on a quite good level to start. And of course, as I said, we still have the process that you have to individually ask for the permission to use uh, the system anyway. So if there are something uh, that we are suspicious of, we can deny the internet permission or we can take the device away. It's also possible for us to have remote surveillance by surveilling the log information that comes from the laptops. Mm. So uh, there are many ways to take this into consideration. OK, yeah, thank you. So. Um is there some uh, challenges that uh, we have faced so far, like when implementing this uh, prison system? Like some practical challenges, for example, or some uh, ideological challenges? Or in, in prison environment, the, ch the first challenge is the security, because we are always mm -hmm. first very security oriented. Mm. So that's why bringing new systems like this is always a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Is there is there something that uh, you have had like some challenge, but you have like managed it some somehow already, I, or mm, like any examples or? Um, I think now that we have been developing the system and we have mm. good feedback from prisoners, and I think little by little the attitude from the staff side has uh, started to be more positive. So uh, they also start to see the benefits that can mm. be uh, that we can get by using this kind of system that the prisoners can. Uh, more independently use the services. It doesn't take prison staff's time mm. to take care of these things. Uh, instead of asking the staff member to make the video call to social insurance office, uh, the prisoner can themselves have that call from the cell device. Yeah. And, and so these kind of, if if the system for prisoners, the smart system, um, also makes uh, somehow smoother the processes that staff has. This is always a good benefit to show. Mm, yeah, and I can see all the benefits of this, and, but I, I can also recognize those challenges that Thomas is representing. Mm. But uh, when you talk about this, uh, that staff uh, member of, like staff uh, of the prison can now see the benefits. So have you faced a lot of like resistance in the first place? when you uh, have started this, because this is, as you said, this is a huge, huge change that uh, prisoners can use uh, more internet, for example. Mm. Yes, this is, a, this is a change, definitely. And I think if we would keep that uh, some, uh, some kind of a rec <coughs> record, what Thomas was referring to, I think mm. we could see that the use of these services has uh, 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 has um, gone up, especially during this pandemic year. This pandemic year was a big mm. change for, for the digital services in prison system too. So uh, uh, I think the benefits will will be shown in time, yeah. and, and and we can already see that it has benefited prisoners mm. a lot. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can totally agree as well. You know, uh, from um, well, 
uh, after like being CEO for 20 years now, um, I totally <laughs> agree. And I was kind of, you know, like a smiling when I heard Pia saying, because when other staff finds that this in even some way eases my personal task or chore, like a choice, everyday chores, they all, all, I believe that they start to agree that this is very good, you know, At, <laughs> if it prevents me from walking to the place or another and it's called intimate to recent there you know i believe that many people you know like and you know, i tend to agree that well this is good anyway you know it saves my steps <laughs> and the other thing is like especially here in uh, sukiva prison we are quite remote we are well in the middle of the nowhere as as you can almost like i say uh i believe that stuff generally here thinks that we sort of like an um, uh, skype calls to relatives are much you know like in a way are much better quite beneficial even even both to like a uh, facility and even both to prisoners that also sort of like uh, gives prisoners opportunities to speak to their families girlfriends partners whatever you know, like more, quite more often because most of the people do have a quite long or quite long low like a way to get here and back you know just to attend like a uh, 140 minutes uh, meet at Saturday, you have to drive like a 500 kilometers. It's not so, it's 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 not so like an um, convenient, and it's it's not benefiting any, er, anybody. But you know, have an opportunity to chat and have a bit sort of like video call to your like on the dearest ones, like in a almost like a daily, on daily basis is very good. And other thing is that the stuff is very much you know like kind of considering these video calls much more safer way to. To meet, uh, arrange these meetings as well, because if you like, gonna uh, think like a conjugal visits, what we do have here, or even like gonna uh, visits face to face in Finland, uh, face to face in prison, you know, there is always this opportunity to misuse those opportunity, uh, like an um, misuse those meetings as well to like mm -hmm. an, uh, to try to push trucks or like an, uh, like an, uh, what all sort of like an. Um, illegal business is much more easier when you have this sort of like in a physical meetings but when you it's quite hard to misuse this sort of like a platform and also when it benefits inmates as well it's sort of like an insurance their possibilities to meet and uh, meet their families you know and uh, maybe it gives them possibility possibility to keep up their relationship during the sentence time it's very good you know and i believe that this also relates to the question what we have in a chat box down there about this yeah, sort of actually, like a principle, yeah. yeah, about this principle of normality, you know, because of uh, yeah, that's if well, can I believe it is better to you to Almalena to read that question first, you know? Yeah, yeah, we we have just uh, got one question, and uh, it's uh, that Rob Canton Nordic commitment to normality uh, or normalization makes so much sense, but many countries resist this perhaps perhaps because they don't think prisons should be normal. They want them to be punitive. And yeah, this is very familiar thought as well. So do you, uh, Tuomas or Pia, do you have some uh, answers or thoughts on this one? Well, I can start, Just you know. This, yeah. yeah, this talk is very much my thesis, what I did to Cambridge like one year ago. Yeah, yeah, we are not, well, we, have, we do have a strong uh, heritage of being non punitive and we we are tolerant and in a, in a in a certain way and we do have this sort of like a very uh neutral or very sort of like an um lame or tame prison system what is sort of like an uh, underlined as an uh, un the umbrella goes the umbrella which under which we are is sort of like this nudic exceptionalism and so on but we do not have a so well we do not have a so sharp punitive talk we haven't had that, but I believe that we are stepping, we are following uh, the rest of the, this Europeanis Europeanization, or how do you spell it, a hard word, but sort of like a, we are more and more connecting to the Europe and we are wanna more and more getting these sort of like an um, ideas of, uh, in a sort of like ideas and talks from uh, Anglophone countries, which tend to be much more punitive than we are. So we are following that. We. Something happened. Something Can happened with Thomas. <laughs> yeah, Thomas is unmuted. Thomas, can you hear us? Or 
Rob, can you hear us? Or can? I think, yeah, maybe move over to Pia. Maybe Pia can answer the question. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So Wait Pia, for Thomas you... to rejoin us, hopefully. Mm, yeah. The normality yeah. principle question. Yeah, I think yeah, your present yeah. system in Scandin... Sorry, yeah. yeah. I was I just think asking, present... why is it... Sorry. <laughs> why is it important? <laughs> so you can answer us. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, about no. the question of normality that came in the YouTube chat. So I think Nordic yeah. countries are quite advanced in their prison system compared to many mm. other countries. So for us, we've had a long time this uh, principle of normality because uh, what, what we have seen and what is also based on scientific studies is that this kind of uh, uh, attitude works better with prisoners than the old tradition way so uh, more strict sentences or more isolation uh, doesn't help uh, it, it may make uh, things work, uh, worse considering mm. recidivism too so yeah. um, yes I'm quite proud that actually in Nordic countries and, and in Finland especially we are we are quite uh, open with also with the modern technology and that we have been uh, able to implement it in the prisons and provide prisoners a secured contact to to outside services du during their sentence during their prison time this is very yeah. very important yeah i i agree also and it's like I, I think like we think that it's the reintegration in the society because every prisoner is uh, releasing at some point so it, it's very important that they have those skills and all, all the things that help them to uh, live a life without crime in the future. So, so I, I think, yeah, we strength that uh, very much. And I, I think it's Tuomas back now. Hello. Can you hear me Hello. again? For yes, a reason or other, I got kicked out, you know. <laughs> maybe I, I went too political or something. And... Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, but on, well, as I was, yeah, as I was saying, we haven't been... Um, such a punitive country. We are having these sort of small echoes about get more and more uh, like an um, empowering punitive talk. But I don't know. We are not even far like these anglophone countries at the moment. And I believe that the vast my majority of uh, Finnish people will accept this sort of like an uh, idea that the mm. prisoners should also have this sort of like opportunity to chat with their loved ones from a cell and have this sort of like a normal banking activities or normal sort of like applications or whatever why are we sort of like on a new uh devices and new technologies as long as we are like an um as long as we are fascin fascinating uh, facilitating them with an uh care and uh certain sort of like a zero security level i believe so yeah yeah that's important so uh i'm uh looking at the time we have five uh, more minutes so I i'm thinking like whether there is any other questions or comments or or like should we just keep talking <laughs> Oh, Melina, I've, I've got a, a question, if that's okay. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. okay. Lovely. Um, it's really interesting looking at um, Rob Canton's comment because I've spent some time in prison as well. And okay. what, what, I, what it was really interesting uh, as a journalist to observe in my time that I was in prison is the fact that the people that make the rules, they want it to be more punitive and mm. not normal, not like home. Mm. Whereas, in fact, what I actually saw and talking to a lot of people in there is you realise that actually structure food every day um calmness you know no 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 kind of loud noise no stress and stuff actually mm. is not normal for those people and in fact coming okay. into a, an, an environment where those things are actually benefits as part of the rehabilitation and maybe thinking a bit like our colleagues we were talking to early in romania where talking about things like um you know, sowing the seeds of positivity that someone could actually have this life going forward. If you come from a life of chaos, prison actually is can actually be seen as quite a positive environment. As 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 Thomas seen that in his time as well. Yeah, and also I believe that the the people who know prison life, the people who have been in prison, either like been, been as a prisoners or have been working in prison, they 
tend not to be as punitive as the vast majority of people who don't who don't who don't know anything about the simple life, you know. Because race is sort of like on a need for continuity in prison. This is sort of not like a kiosk or like a business where you can just like a shutdown if you don't like like it, you know. They are living, you know, like there are individuals and there are people, you know, living here in these conditions every day. And you cannot push your thing as far as there is no you always have to open that door next day again, you know, and you have to you have to sort of like an um, fix your life, either if you are a prisoner or a prison officer, usually. We have to cope each other here day by day, you know, and that's uh, one big uh, sort of like a difference in thinking if you compare sort of like a people who know prison life and people who doesn't know it, prison life or just have seen the television or f- movies or whatever, you know, there's a big difference. And Pia, from, 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 from your experience with the smart prison, I mean, it sounds like a, a, a wonderful opportunity actually to create that normalization with, with the necessary security, obviously, of contact with family, particularly from what Thomas was saying, where the prison where he is is, is a long way away from other people. Um, certainly, when in, in my experience, where people were maybe put into prison, which was a long way away from their families, particularly if they had children to come and visit. Um, as long as the security restrictions are there, and I completely understand that, this is actually quite a positive way of doing it. We've got a very innovative project in the UK called Storybook Dads, for example, which I think has expanded from there, which, you know, dads reading stories and then learning some computer skills to make the front cover of the CD so their children can hear their voice at night. That is an isolated version, whereas, in fact, smart prisons and could actually mean that there's a contact with the dad. I, personally, I think from my own experience with my own children and talking to other people while I was inside, actually the children are probably one of the few ways you're actually going to get a, a person to change their life around because it's the impact that you have on other people that, that's important. Mm. Yes, of course. And that's one of, uh, one of the most used uh, video call services that you take that you can get contact to your own family members and your children and that's that's what we are providing in the smart prison and that's what we've already provided from the joint use workstations that prisoners have been using for years skype meetings with families and it's especially good for prisoners who are foreigners because their families are not in finland they are in some other country or then even inside Finland, the distances might be quite long and all the families don't have money to travel for face-to-face meetings. It's also a, quest- it's also a financial question. So this is, this is um, uh, a good opportunity to, to keep the contact alive, <laughs> even if you are in prison. And of course, if you have, if you want to combine some elements like you told about the uh, uh, prisoners reading stories to their children. This is also something we have been testing and we have quite active NGOs in Finland who um, are very much aware of the situation of prisoners' children and prisoners' children's rights to meet their um, parents. So um, this is important question. And yeah. Almeida, as a matter of fact, yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, Thomas. Thomas, over to you. Sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, we do have uh, this sort of like a project going on, which Pia described. I believe that it's named something like a story time, bit time stories or whatever. But it's basically the prisoner reads this sort of like a um, good night sleep tale to. Uh, we are using this sort of like a smart tablets, you know, and when they sort of like a. Uh, it's not so smart system, but they basically they are just been copying the file and sending with the USB stick to the to the, to the family. But still, the principle is the same. Now, Melina, can I ask you a final question about smart smart um, prisons? Maybe um, things to do with things like you know uh, employment and education. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I remember when I was in it was sort of 10, 10, 12 years ago. I think it was um, you had the uh, computer, but it wasn't. There was no kind of internet access, so it was all sort of, you know, mm. MSN, Carter, Encyclopedia. It's amazing what you can find on there when you go looking. Um, so it was very much in isolation, whereas now a lot mm. of the jobs and stuff with a lot of these, these people, if we're going to get um, uh, ex-offenders to, 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 offenders to turn their lives around, we've got to get them to be thinking about employment, not just the way that they've been making money creatively. So therefore, skills like smart prisons and stuff, obviously you've got opportunities to 
you know, access to maybe using software, particular digital skills and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and, and learning things. Is that something that you're using your smart prison system for as well? Yes, yes. yes. And we tried. To- yeah, Pia, you can actually uh, answer to this one if you want. No, please, you first. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. So, yeah, we we have those like uh, goals that we we try to uh, learn and like teach uh, prisoners how to use the di- digital services. And uh, in the risk and needs assessment, we also like ask about them, like if there is some risk uh, needs needs of uh, learning uh, digital skills that and we trying to. Uh, consider them in their sentence plan and they can also uh, practice them in like kind of normal prison not in smart smart, smart prison but i think in the future uh, when this uh, smart prison system if we get more more of those uh, things it's getting better and if if you be have now something you can say <laughs> No, basically the same what you said. Yeah. This is also a question that needs to we need to pay attention more in the future. So the lack of digital skills is a risk for um, problems in the modern si- society. So you can be mm-hmm. digitally marginalized if you don't have enough skills to take care of your business in online digital world. And this is what uh, what happens. Uh, with many prisoners first mm. of all you have to have the proper devices and but then also the proper skills to use to use yes, these sir. services and that's what we ask in the assessment process and we also have digital skills courses in prisons nowadays a little bit more than before i think that's one of the key things i, I remember in my experience uh, again it would have been a traditional uh, prison that thomas would probably recognize um you're looking at the move as a mass to education or to employment um, or to the medical center. And of course, as soon as there were any kind of issues within the prison system, all of the lockdown meant that you couldn't get to education, so you missed out, or you couldn't get to employment, so you missed out. Whereas in fact, using the smart way of thinking in a traditional setting is actually, Mm. it's not just about smart because it's new technology or a new building. It's the fact that you're thinking of, if someone is gonna be isolated now for that morning and they can't move, then at least then they're still able to be able to access. And it actually leads to things like being a lot calmer because most of the time I used to see people getting upset and I was very lucky to work in the library for my final three weeks was the fact that actually the library was probably the calmest place because they were Mm. getting access to the things they wanted to take back to their cells. And so not being able to get to the library would have been quite difficult, whereas in fact you smart systems and stuff, being able to access things, all the things that then got delivered to you. I think it's that's not about being... Um, lazy or making it soft what you're actually doing is actually saying to people there's still punishment because you can't go out but it's about the fact that you know it's these systems so I think it's very inspiring listening to all three of you talking so thank you very much for taking the time thank you thank you thank you very much and yeah thank you Pia and Tuo thank you thank you it was nice to chat with you guys yes thank you bye see you okay